Good afternoon and welcome to the Board of Trustees meeting for Francis Spring University. For the record, the media has been notified in accordance with the requirements of the Freedom of Information Act. And I will now ask Ms. Davis to call the roll. Mr. Bryson? Here. Mr. Coleman? Mr. Dove? Dr. Dozier? Here. Mr. Duncan? Here. Mr. Elmore, are you on the line? Mr. Gunn? Here. Mr. Jackson? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Mr. Keels? Here. Ms. Leatherman? Mr. Lee? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Dr. O'Kelly? We do have a quorum present. Now turning to the agenda that we have first item is the are the minutes from November 14 2019 are there any addition or corrections recommend approve second those from Mr. Dozier thank you. second Mr. Jackson all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed go now on to the committee reports executive affairs um <clears throat> we've met, met this morning concern resolution and the the executive committee is <coughs> unanimously uh, <coughs> recommending resolution 01-20 approving the Bachelor <coughs> of Science and Visual Arts Education at Francis Marion. You all have the resolution, so I'm not going to read it to you. Uh, do I have a second to the executive committee motion, please? Second. Second, Mr. McIntyre. Any discussion? All those in favor? Six five are saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We'll now go to Academic Affairs, Mr. Bryson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Academic Affairs and Accreditation Committee uh, met today. We, <clears throat> we received a number of, of excellent reports, including uh, the Faculty Governance, College of Liberal Arts, School of Business, School of Education, School of Health Sciences, and the Library. We also received an, a, a very impressive report from Enrollment Management. Um, this spring 2020, our enrollment stands at 3,765. That's an 11% increase from um, spring a year ago. Um, we also um, have seen a 9% increase in freshman applications for this coming year um, over last year. Three McNair scholars have been chosen and have accepted the scholarship and will enroll this fall as well. Uh, from the Office of Admissions, um, they've um, hosted an open house on February the 8th and two more are scheduled for March 7th and April 4th. And um, they're also preparing to hold eight new freshmen and transfer orientations later this summer. And finally, from the Registrar's Office, at December commencement, 221 undergraduate degrees were awarded, 77 graduate degrees were also awarded, and plans are underway for spring commencement, which will take place on May the 9th. That concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Bryson's questions for Mr. Bryson. Hearing no questions, we'll now <coughs> move to development of alumni. Mr. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we had several uh, presentations. First, Lauren Stanton presented the Development Foundation report. Uh, she announced they've got a couple of new hires. Ashley Cartrett is the new Administrative Coordinator for Finance and Account Management and Kayla Wilson's the new program coordinator for scholarships. Uh, they've had several events, uh, past and upcoming. On February 10th, they gave out over 200 tickets, majority to alumni, to the Florence Symphony. Uh, the Education Foundation Scholarship ship reception was uh, here this Tuesday, and around 200 scholarship donors and recipients were in attendance. The 50th gala is coming up on April 7th, and the Education Foundation Golf Tournament uh, is coming up on May 21st. Additionally, the Education Foundation's received a number of new scholarships. Uh, there have been multiple endowed scholarships, an education scholarship, an international fund, and a donation of property. Uh, next, we've moved on to the Alumni Affairs Report from Mr. Uh, Lee Darkin. Uh, he reported that the School of Education had an event the week of homecoming with over 70 people in attendance. Homecoming evening, they had over 100 people attend an event that evening. Uh, they had a tailgating reception where 400 to 500 pictures were uploaded uh, with the event hashtag. And of course, tonight we've got our alumni awards reception at the PAC. And Monday, there's a Department of Psychology alumni event. And the 31st, 
there'll be a school of business along that event. Finally, we heard from Teresa Rainey, the Regional and Community Affairs Report. Uh, the University Place Gallery has had over 1,500 visitors. Uh, their most recent exhibit is the Blood and Honey exhibit that's going on. Uh, the PAC's got multiple events coming up. The Temptations are sold out. Uh, the Columbus City Ballet and School of Dance is presenting Cinderella. Welcome Home Vietnam Vets is coming up. Uh, South Carolina Dance Theater is presenting Sleeping Beauty. The FMU Music Ensemble is uh, upcoming, as well as a production of the Song of the New World by the FMU Theater. And the Leadership Institutes have current sessions wrapping up in April. Uh, there's additional programming there in May. And the Richardson Center for the Child was recognized uh, by ABC Quality Care through DSS recently. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Questions for Mr. Moore? Hearing no question, Mr. Moore. We'll now go to finance and facilities. Mr. Gunn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the committee had met today and was presented with information by Daryl Bridges from the client report. The committee had two action items for your consideration today. The staff forward your package will find resolution 02-20 for the issuance of athletic facilities revenue bond series 2020. Resolution follows up on the one we passed last June and approved the university to seek refinancing and new funding to renovate portions of the Smith University Center and complete the field house in the Griffith, Griffin Athletic Complex. The refinancing will reduce the interest rates of the current bond and result in net savings of over $600,000. And the new issuance will take advantage of a very favorable bond market. Bonds will be serviced from the existing fee structure and no increases will result from this action. This resolution is recommended by the Finance and Facilities Committee. <coughs> resolution comes from the Finance Committee. Um, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Moore. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution passes. In tab five of your packet, you'll find resolution 03-20, a resolution for an adjustment of dining and housing service fees. The resolution provides for a modest increase in meal plan rates of 3% to continue meeting increased costs and provide high quality services for students. It also provides a modest increase in the rates of a campus apartment to meet the maintenance and operational needs of those units. No increases in the residence hall dorm units will result. This resolution is recommended by the Finance and Facilities Committee. We have a motion from the Finance Committee on 03-20. Do I have a second to that resolution? Second. Second, second by Mr. Moore. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. The committee received a budget summary report that indicates both fall and spring revenues are ahead of projections with due to strong enrollment <coughs> and that expenses are aligned with expectations for this time of the year. And finally, the committee discussed the ongoing development of new facilities. The Honors College and the Leatherman Medical at the Education Complex are both well underway on schedule. The Freshwater Ecology Center is in development design build team selection process for the project is underway. And um, Chairman, that completes my report. Thank you, Mr. Gunn. Questions for Mr. Gunn? Hearing no question, Mr. Gunn, we'll now go to Student Life and Athletics. Mr. Duncan. Uh, student Life and Athletics Committee, Mr. Chairman and Board of Trustee members, uh, we heard from uh, first from Ms. Kendra Mason. Uh, she reported on Homecoming Week, uh, Silent Party and Disco uh, for Homecoming Week was one event. They had a Golden Mixer, uh, which was a game night and social for students, and a bonfire night, uh, which they had hot cocoa and uh, popcorn, nachos, and cheese. Uh, uh, Senate elections are going on uh, from March 9th to 13th. Uh, we have a total of 11 students running for office, and most of them are under, underclassmen who desire to be more involved in student uh, and campus, in student campus. Uh, executive officers' elections are going on. Uh, this will close on Friday, uh, and uh, this is, uh, surpasses what we did, what the, the, the uh, students did last semester. Uh, Food pantry uh, update, over 90 students have been served through the food pantry. Uh, these are non-perishable food items uh, that are available for students. Uh, career readiness week is going on and this is to prepare them for uh, March 25th uh, for the career fair. Uh, 
these at the career fair there will be mock interviews uh, uh, there will be uh, entrepreneurial se uh, sessions uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, a few business uh, people coming in to present these uh, entrepreneurships uh, there's a resume writing uh, with LinkedIn sessions uh, and other events will be uh, going on during this time a uh, higher education uh, symposium will be will take place uh, with uh, Representative Terry Alexander uh, with the South Carolina House of Representatives, uh, student, uh, Superintendent uh, Kendra Bethay with the Marion County School System, and Super Superintendent Neil uh, Vincent uh, with uh, Florence District Two. We are also uh, having an event, uh, Campus Police Appreciation Day on March 24th. This is the birthday of Investigator Fair Turner, and they will be celebrating their police officers by providing lunch uh, for these officers and other awards to them. Uh, also, uh, the students towards the end of the semester uh, will begin uh, Blue Book distributions and donut nights in, in the library. Uh, Dr. Chris McKinney reported for uh, Student Life. Uh, and these activities are going on now, uh, have, have taken place in the past. It's homecoming, which is February 1st. Uh, they had three marching uh, bands, uh, 10 real floats. Uh, this was the best uh, parade they had this year. Um, they had over 4,000 in attendance. Uh, it had a large alumni tailgate area for the alumni. The President's Bowl is uh, going to finalize or has finalized on March 2nd and uh, this was a great event for the students. Uh, black history events uh, occurred uh, during the month of February. Indigo dying demonstrations and hands-on crafting events. Uh, they had a couple of lecture series, one on the, the Jamestown settlement of free slaves they had a sweet grass basket uh, demonstrations and hands-on crafting events. Uh, there was a Cannes Music Festival, Film Festival uh, event. Uh, 169 students created 60 films, and the winners will go on to uh, California uh, for a final event. Also, uh, coming up is Student Life events, uh, Grill After Dark. Uh, paint and sip, sip poetry slam and karaoke karaoke night. Uh, they have the Miss uh, FMU uh, scholarship pageant coming up on March 10th, the career fair on March 25th, uh, Arts International Festival on uh, Saturday, April 18th, uh, the Student Life Award Ceremony April 14th, and the ROTC commissioning ceremony and public service recognition ceremony uh, also coming up. Uh, Mr. Murray Hartzler announced uh, that we have a new soccer coach, Ms. Chelsea Parker. Uh, first official day uh, was Monday, March 2nd. Uh, he reported on the academic side of, uh, of our athletes. Uh, we, our GPA for the fall term for all athletes was 3.0. For all student athletes, it's 255 athletes. A record of 133 athletes had above 3.0 and 18 students with uh, 4.0. All, all fall teams posted an increase uh, in their winnings uh, for, from the 2018 season. The men's soccer finished ranked 22nd in the nation. Uh, the team lost in the second round of the NCAA National Tournament. Uh, most wins by the team in 20 seasons, 16, 5, and 1. Uh, the women's uh, basketball team lost last night in a conference tournament quarterfinals. Uh, they are returning all but uh, one senior, the one senior, and the top two that made uh, all national conference team. Uh, the softball team is 20 and 3, one senior. 
with the conference play to start in two weeks. Uh, women's cross country earned all academic team national recognition uh, for, the third, uh, for the third consecutive year. And uh, the athletic auction is April 30th. Uh, start time is 6.30. And we're asking uh, all trustee members to participate in this. <coughs> and Murray will be sending out an email to all of us. Uh, the new school board video uh, board and soccer, and excuse, excuse me, scores table is set to be installed by April 1st of this year. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Questions, for Mr. Duncan. Hearing no questions, Mr. Duncan. We'll now move to the president's report, Dr. Carter. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, there are a number of things I want to I want to work through today. It'll it'll be a little more lengthy report than than normal, but 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 I just want to pause for a second and and remark on one statistic that uh, the trustee Duncan shared with us. This, this, is, this is a tough school to get a 4.0 GPR in a semester. 18 of our student athletes got 4.0s last semester. For those of you who played varsity athletics in college, and I know Trustee McIntyre did, you understand how difficult it is to juggle athletics with academics. 18 of our athletes got perfect GPRs in fall semester. That's remarkable. Murray, my compliments to the coaches and my compliments to those 18 kids. That's a remarkable job, and I'm so proud of that. Thank you. Let's move on, Mr. Chairman. If I might, let me give you the board briefly an update on where our budget stands as it's going through the, the, the General Assembly at this point. So Ways and Means has passed its version of the 2021 uh, appropriations bill. We, we had requested uh, in, the, in our budget request $1.8 million in recurring funding for next year. Ways and Means actually gave us $2.2 million in recurring funding for next year. They, if you stop and think about that, they gave us $400,000 more than we had requested in the budget request. We did ask 500, we asked 750, I'm sorry, 7.5 million in non-recurring funding for maintenance, renovation, repair of our facilities and infrastructure. Ways and Means gave us 5 million uh, on the line for that. And, but they also put a million on the line in non-recurring funding for the construction of our School of Business, School of Education building as a placeholder simply to see what occurs when that budget gets all the way through the House and goes over to the Senate. You know, Mr. Chairman, over the past 20 years, the General Assembly has been very, very generous to this university with its funding. But the last two to three years, the General Assembly has been very, very generous with its base recurring funding to this, uh, to this university. Should the Ways and Means budget hold, the, the, particularly the recurring funding and, and that base funding, should that money hold through the House and through the Senate, and I'm comfortable that it will, we'll be coming to the board in June recommending that we freeze tuition again next year for the second year in a row. I think that means... Uh, I think that means a lot to our parents and our students. I think it continues to make this institution more affordable and more accessible to the men and women who will select us as their choice to pursue their collegiate education. So I'm comfortable we'll be coming back with that recommendation. Mr. Chairman, let me just take a minute or two and brief the board on where we stand on the university's preparations with regard to um, to the, the, the uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19. Um, we communicated to the university community earlier in the week uh, where the university is, the actions we've taken, and the actions we anticipate at taking in, in near term relative to preparing for, um, for uh, this, this, uh, the, the uh, spread of this virus. Um, the university has canceled all of our spring trip breaks abroad uh, in, uh, involving FMU students. 
spring break trips abroad invo involving FMU students. And we've suspended all upcoming study abroad <clears throat> trips scheduled for late spring and the summer. Uh, we've done that for two reasons. We've done that, one, because the CDC has recommended that, and that seems to me like a sensible recommendation. We've also done it because of the uncertainty with regard to the return of those students back into the states after they study abroad. So this, this for us, this is not a particularly good time to be initiating new study abroad uh, trips for our students going abroad. We do have five students um, in Europe right now, in, in Ireland and France. Those students have asked us to let them to continue their studies until their semester there ends at the early part of May. We're, we're going to do that for now unless circumstances change in this country substantially uh, such that it might be necessary to bring them back. For, but at this point in time, we'll allow those, those five students to continue to pursue their, their studies in Ireland and France. We have uh, blanketed all of our university buildings here in downtown with, uh, with uh, CDC, uh, Centers for Disease Control Information, on the best practices for dealing with and controlling infectious disease prevention. And we've increased the number of hand sanitizers that we've distributed in buildings across campus. We've also increased the number of custodial staff at the university. We will, uh, we will substantially increase the number of, of cleanings that occur daily in classrooms and workspaces across the university in an effort to, uh, to continue to take those preventative measures that we think are, are critical. We've also reached an agreement with a local uh, medical health provider to provide us additional health care professionals at the university health clinic should circumstances warrant our increasing that health care support uh, down the road. Um, and and uh, Ms. Chairman, we, we have posted on our, uh, on our university website a, uh, a health advisory page which allows our students, our parents, and our university community to access not only what actions we continue to take, but also the latest information and actions coming out of the Centers for Disease Control and out of the uh, uh, South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. At this juncture, that's, that's where we sit in terms of our preparatory uh, efforts, but, but I also want to assure the board that these, these issues tend to change every few days, and we continue every morning to kind of monitor what's occurred nationally and within the state the day before, and we'll continue to do that going into the, into the future. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, let me just say a word or two about the jumbotron. I don't. I. I can't. I can't quite remember what the committee called it when it came out, but but I've referred to it as the jumbotron in the gym. That'll be installed in April. Remember, we're doing that for two reasons. We're not only doing that because it allow us to cover basketball and volleyball games in more depth and allow fans to enjoy the the games more irrespective of where they're seating in the auditorium. But remember, the second reason we did that was to provide all the seats in that gymnasium better views of the commencement ceremonies twice a year. And those, uh, those video screens will provide that opportunity, and I'm glad that we, we were able this year to afford to move ahead with the installation of those, of those screens. I think that's an, that's an important part of making this university a more vibrant and, and frankly, more contemporary in terms of the, the services that we, we offer to our students, to our parents, and the rest of the university community. Finally, Mr. Chairman, let me just, just um, make, make one comment that uh, 
that's a difficult comment to make, but, um, but I've tried to put it off for as long as I can. A few years ago, maybe three years ago, Miss Kim Davis came to me and told me that she, um, she thought maybe it was time for her to retire. Well, with my usual vitality and wit, I, uh, I persuaded her not to retire three years ago, and then we had that conversation two <laughs> years ago, and, and I, uh, I pleaded with her. I may have cried a little bit, and, and Kim agreed to stay another year. Last year she came, and I flopped on the floor and rolled around, and, and Kim agreed to stay one more year, but, but I, think I'm out of, I think I'm out of gestures, okay? Kim, Kim has told me that she intends to retire at the end of this year. I'm, I'm simply telling you this as a, as a preface to tell you that we will honor her in a very formal way at the June board meeting. But I also want Kim to know how much she has meant to me, this university, and this board over the years. Thank you, Kim. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Any questions for Dr. Carter? Hearing no questions for Dr. Carter, I'm not aware of any unfinished business, not aware of any new business, not aware we don't need an executive session. So I have a motion to adjourn. So moved to seconding. We now stand adjourned. <laughs>